a step-by-step -step watercolour sunflower tutorial. That's what we're doing in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Michelle and on this channel you'll find all things watercolour as well as mixed media and drawing, a little bit of motivation and business for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you can get notified every time I have a video for you. I make at least one free video here a week on a Thursday with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful, large, realistic looking sunflower. It looks quite complicated, but actually this tutorial is perfectly suitable for beginners as well. I'm going to walk you through every stage. We're going to do it quite methodically. I'll be explaining all the materials I'm using, all the paint colors, but please don't worry. You can do this tutorial with your own colors. I'll give you alternatives all the way through the video. So let's get on. I'm going to point the camera downwards and we're going to start with a really, really simple drawing technique that's going to enable you just to face your sunflower in the correct direction so that all of your flowers don't just face forwards. It's going to help you to rotate to get foreshortening and composition right and it's really really easy. So here is the sunflower that I'm going to be painting for you in this tutorial. We're going to go through it step by step. I'll talk about all the materials I'm using. I'll tell you we'll choose the colors later on as part of the painting tutorial. I'll tell you which colors I'm using but I will also give you alternatives because I never believe that you have to have the exact same colors as me. This is actually part of a larger painting. I'm loosely basing the composition on this uh, this copyright free photograph that I got from the Pexels website. I will of course credit the photographer in the description of this video. I know some of you are going to be asking me where is the a larger tutorial and as you see me go through the painting you may see bits of the background appear because I'm also filming for Patreon at the moment. Now I simply cannot put you know five hour long tutorials on YouTube they would completely tank it would be uh, disastrous for me. I do put full tutorials on YouTube sometimes simpler ones and I hope you'll enjoy doing the sunflower with me but the full tutorial is to be found on Patreon. I'll put a link to Patreon in the video description in case that interests you too. So the first thing we want to do is to draw our sunflower. Now I have a method for drawing flowers that are facing over to one side like this and um, just to clarify although I'll be drawing all of the parts of the flower for this larger painting we'll only be doing the actual painting of the flower here not the leaves and the stem. I do have other videos available for free on YouTube. I'll link to one of those up above in the information cards and also in the video description because that doesn't show on all devices so that you can have a look at some various leaf painting techniques. Now the easiest way to get to grips with a flower that's on the side like this is to use my, uh, my method which is to find the outside shape and then to find the center point. Now you can see the center point here would be in the middle of this green part here and you can see the shape of the flower it's not fully circular so it can be really confusing when you're looking at flowers and they're a strange shape so what I like to do is sort of just get an idea of the overall shape and you just want to sort of get yourself a shape that would fit around you know if you drew straight and curved lines around the edge of this flower what would that shape look like so you're reducing the flower to a simple shape then you want to mark your center point. Now we said it was here. Look how much closer it is to this edge than this edge. We can also check how high it is. It looks to me to be about halfway up. When I go back to using the larger photograph, I'll actually check that by measuring with my pencil and seeing if it's closer to the bottom or close to the top or dead central. But certainly in terms of the, uh, the width here, it's far over to the left. So we can then make that mark. From there, I can start to draw the center of the flower shape. Again, it's not a dead circle. Observation is so important here. I've got something like this going on. It's a simple matter then just to start taking those petal shapes out. So you see how you can start to get a sunflower shape and just by observing the shape of those petals and using this outside shape as a guideline, we start then to get the idea of a sunflower. Of course, we need more petals. I'll be doing this a lot more carefully when it comes to the larger drawing. But you can see how effective this method is and it can be used for any shape of flower. 
find the outside shape, find the center point. Even if the center point is hidden, for instance, in something like an orchid, it's still really important because most of the petals come out from there. So now you've placed your sunflower head on the paper, you've got it rotated in the correct direction and you've got the rough proportions to work to. Now we're going to go ahead and put the details onto our sunflower in pencil. So I've got the shape of my flower now, I'm about to start filling it out with the details. You're not going for botanical accuracy here, you know, as long as it looks good enough, it's good enough for this tutorial. So all we're going to do now is start looking at the shape of the petals and taking them out from that center line and start building our flower up. It's really important to look at the shape of these petals and to keep looking back at your original picture. Do you see how some of these petals have literally a hole in where something's eaten them? Now some people would, uh, would get rid of that. I actually really like things like that so I'm going to draw those in too. It won't be necessary to put a whole load of detail in this area here because we'll be doing most of it with the brush or with some watercolour pencils but I'm just going to just sketch in roughly the shape of the centre part and I'm going to carry on drawing all of the petals in. So now I've mostly finished my drawing you can see I've still got some guidelines in place so what I'm going to do now is just take an eraser and just lift out any guidelines or any lines that are going through another petal. You can see here that I've just drawn this one straight over the top. It's the best way of getting things to look like they're going behind things is just draw straight through and then remove the parts that you don't need. I would also like to point out as well that I do draw darker for YouTube than I would otherwise do. So I don't suggest that you actually draw your own lines as thick or as dark as this because it can be hard to remove them, particularly under yellow paint. But I draw a little bit stronger so that you can easily see while I'm filming. So you've got your under drawing done. Let's go through the paints and materials that I'll be using in this tutorial. As I said, you don't need to have the exact same materials as me in order to paint this sunflower. So let's talk about the materials I'm going to be using in this tutorial. Now I am working on Saunders Waterford High white paper which has been stretched onto board. I've been using a soft sketching pencil, I think it's a 3B and I've also got a De La Roni firm putty rubber. And I'm going to be using paints in this tutorial that are from my own two sets but don't worry if you don't have these I will give you alternatives as we go through the video. So I've got my essential set and this is the leaflet that comes with it so it uh, it helps you to mix extra colours. So we've got that set. I've got a couple of colours I'm using from there. And then most of the colours will be used from this floral set. And again, there's a mixing guide in here so you can make extra colours. And I will put details of all these paints in the video description. And at the time of making this video, we have actually just started to sell the, uh, the colours separately from these sets. So you can now just buy one colour if you want to. Of course it always works out cheaper to buy sets but that's the case for, um, for any manufacturer. So this is my floral set and I'll be using some of the colours from here. I'm going to be using the marigold which is an orange colour. I'm going to be using this petal shadow colour, soft green and darkest green. And then from my essential set I'll be using diarylide yellow. This is the yellow that I'm going to use for the main part of the sunflowers. As I said, as I go through the video, as I pick up each of these colours, I will give you alternatives so you can choose something from your own colours. The last thing I'm going to be using, just for some of the details in the centre here, is we're going to be using some watercolour pencils. I haven't picked my colours yet. Likely something like dark brown or some dark green will go into the middle here with watercolour pencil. However, if you don't have watercolour pencils, again, you can just use your paintbrush. So everything I'm showing you in this tutorial can be adjusted for the materials that you already have. And if you're wondering how I chose my colours, you can see on this swatch here that before I started making this video, I swatched various colours. These colours are all from Jackman's Watercolours, who I work with, but um, I wasn't tied to these. You know, if I had found that I didn't have the exact right yellow, then I would have just chosen from another brand. But you can see, actually, I've got some great colours here. There were one or two that I tried that I decided against. And this is why it's really important before you start painting to swatch your colours and play around with things 
Not only did I swatch the colours to see what they looked like, I mixed them together in places to see what happened when I overlaid one colour with another. It's a great way of choosing a limited palette of colours for your painting. You never want to be at the stage, particularly if you've got pan paints, where you're just grabbing, you know, every little bit of 20 different colours. It doesn't help your painting to be sort of cohesive. If you can choose at least some of your colours at the beginning and try to stick to those colours without adding too many more in unless you need to, you'll get a much more stylish look to your work. Now, whilst all flower petals have details and shadow, perhaps even imperfections, we're going to start out really simply and just put a base colour onto our petals that will work up later. So you can see I have a sky in behind it now. As I said, we're just going to be concentrating on the flower head in this tutorial, but I do have other tutorials on painting sunset skies and um, this full tutorial is available on Patreon, as I mentioned before. What I wanna do at this stage is clean up a little bit. You can see I've been very careful to keep most of the sky off of the flower here. Now it does overlap in one or two places, got a little bit of pink here, but it's very, very tiny. So what I'm doing at this stage is just cleaning up and I'm gonna just remove some of those pencil marks. And this is something I've talked about before, both on YouTube and in my Facebook group. This idea of adding and removing pencil as appropriate as you go through the painting. It really is a lot more flexible and just a much nicer way of working. Now, when we look at these yellow petals here, which is what we're going to do first, there are several things that we could do. Now, they've got shadow in, so what we could do is, as we add the yellow in, we could immediately drop the shadow in while it's wet because they have soft edges, and so that would be a way of making that work. Now, whilst that is a perfectly acceptable way of working, and it would work very well, it would be very time-consuming because, you know, you've got to keep cleaning your brush. Every time you pick up the shadow colour, you've then got to clean your brush and go back to the light yellow again. So I'm gonna take a different approach here. What I'm gonna do is paint the light yellow across all of the flowers. Now I do have to draw a little bit more strongly on YouTube so that you can see. So between each petal, I've got a lot of graphite pencil. So I will probably paint those individually and not take the, uh, the paint right the way across those gaps. But if you have less pencil, you know, if you had, for example, you're painting a rose and there was no white on it whatsoever, you could just take the lightest color, maybe a light pink, and take it across the whole thing and then go back in when it was dry and work on individual petals. As I said, I'm gonna be careful with mine not to go over those pencil lines. But if you have used something like an HB and drawn incredibly lightly, that is an option for you. But I have to draw a bit heavier, otherwise it doesn't show up on the camera. So I've got a smallish brush here. And while I'm painting, uh, do forgive the blood on my finger there. I managed to um, slice into my uh, finger with a knife yesterday. So um, that's that. So I'm gonna paint each of these petals and I'm gonna use this brush here. So it's not tiny, tiny, but it's not a huge brush either. So it's just the right size brush for me to manipulate. This is a Jackman's size eight brush. And I'm going to be using the Diarolide yellow from my essential set, which is a very warm yellow. Now, if you do not have this yellow, your next best bet would probably be something like a cadmium yellow deep. It may be possible as well that you could use something like an Indian yellow. You just need to swatch and adjust. If you have an Indian yellow and for instance it's too orange, you could add something like a lemon to it just to cool it down a bit. So you may have to mix your color, but luckily I've got this one here and it's just the right color. I'm gonna keep it fairly light, fair amount of water in it, and we're just putting on an underwash. So at this stage, we're not worrying at all about getting any shadows in. We're going to do that later on. As I said, if I didn't have much pencil, I would go straight across all of these and just paint all of the bits that were yellow in one go. But uh, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful so that I don't trap the pencil under those yellows. There's something about yellow. I think it's because a lot of the, um, the cadmium yellows have a fair amount of uh, opacity to them. There's something about yellows that just seems to trap pencil lines like nothing else. It could just be, you know, an optical illusion, of course, because yellows are the palest colours, but um, there we are. So you can see beautiful, bright, fresh yellow there. I'm actually also just going to grab a piece of uh, a paper towel to put under my hand because I'm conscious of not getting oil on the paper. So I'm going to go round now and I'm going to paint all of those petals yellow. At this stage, if you're getting some value from this free tutorial, please do me a favor and click that thumbs up, that like button. 
YouTube rewards channels with audience interaction. So if you click like or share or subscribe or even leave me a comment, YouTube will push this video out to more people and more people can have fun painting a sunflower with me. And just like we did with the petals, we're now going to put a base colour on the large centre of the flower. So you can see I've added all my flower petals in now. I don't know if it shows on camera, but I have actually done a few of the petals a little bit lighter. So if there's any way you see, you know, like these ones here that are a little bit lighter, you can actually just water those petals down a little bit more or just areas of those petals down a little bit more so that you get more brightness there. It'll seem to make them more insipid, but actually once you get the darks in later on, it'll make them brighter. So um, you have to kind of have a bit of a leap of faith with watercolours, not go too dark. You want these petals to be really strong, so it's tempting to go in with really, really dark yellows. But actually, by the end of the painting, if you've kept them fairly pale, you'll find that the, uh, the white of the paper really glows through them and they show up a lot more. I'm going to now go in and paint an underneath layer on this central part here. Now, there are many colours in here, including some green in the middle. We're going to add that later. And there are also some dark areas here. Most of all, there's this kind of dark orangey yellow that covers most of the uh, of the flower. It seems to be sort of little bits, almost like pollen where the seeds are going to form later on. And so I'm going to go in now with a colour from my floral set called Marigold. If you haven't got this, um, if you've got an orange in your set, that may well do the job. Or perhaps you can mix an orange with a little bit of the yellow you used for the petals if it's, you know, a bit too strong. Another option for you is to use yellow ochre. Now you will get a duller effect than this because it's a much more opaque granular colour. But you know, some flowers go through different seasons, don't they? And by the end of the summer, they are looking a lot more brown than they are at the moment. So yellow ochre could also be used, but you will get a brighter effect if you can use some form of sort of yellowy orange. And we're going to simply put a coating of that colour over the centre of the flower, let it dry, and then we'll be working on top of it later on. So I'm changing to a bigger brush now, at least for most of it. If I need to, I'll go back to a smaller brush, but you always want to go in with the largest brush that you can manipulate. And please do make sure that your um, initial petals are dry at this point, otherwise this whole centre will run into the outside flowers. And at the moment, that's not particularly what we want. I'm going to go in here and all we're going to do is carefully paint this colour round and cover the whole centre of the flower with it. Now our beautiful bright yellow petals have lots of other colours on. In fact I see three distinct types of shadow and shading colour on top of the yellow. I'm going to start with the first of those. We're going to add a little bit of the orange that we used in the centre of the flower just to start to define the shadow areas and get the petals looking a little bit more three-dimensional. So we're going to start putting details on our yellow petals now and there's really three colours on here. So if you have a look at the yellow petals and you look at the darker shades on them, you've really got three things going on. In places you've got this darker orange colour which is pretty much what we've got in the centre here so far. In other places you've got almost a neutral colour. In other words, um, what you would normally do here would be to drop a purple in. Now I'm going to use my petal shadow colour from my floral set and that's designed to be a, um, a purple leaning grey, shall we say. It's designed to go onto yellow flowers without pushing them into green. However, you do sometimes get green shadows on yellow flowers and I think in places here we have some green as well. And although the petal shadow was designed to go on this colour and also on white and pink, without causing that sort of deadness that you can get if you go too brown with petals. Nevertheless, it wouldn't be wise to put too much of it in. I want to also get a variation so that we keep these petals fresh. So the first thing I'm going to do is go in with some more of the marigold, or you may be using um, orange or yellow ochre, and we'll be going in with that next to get some of these um, darker orange areas. You can see where they are. Shadows always sit at the base of things and behind things, so you can see where we're going to need those shadows. And what I'll be doing is I'll be pre-wetting the petals because although there are some stripes on here, there are almost never fully hard edges within petals. It's a big mistake to have a hard edge within a petal. So what we're going to do in this case is I'm going to pre-wet the petal with clean water. So I'm going across the whole petal with clean water like this. Then I'm going to go in with my darker colour. We'll be doing the same process for the other shadow colour and for the green, but we're going in with this orange colour first. Now the difference is, and I'll show you my palette, the difference is I'm picking up almost dry paint. So there's a little bit of water here, but it's not much. 
And the reason for that is if I were to put drippy wet paint onto somewhere that's pre-wet like this, it'll just spread across the whole thing. Now I want softness, but I want it to stay where I put it. So can you see what happens here? And this is easier with tube paint, but you can equally do it with, um, with pan paints. And my, I have got tube paints that have actually dried here. You might want to just, um, when you start painting in your painting session, you might want to put a little drop of water onto those pan paints so they have a chance to soften slightly. And can you see what I'm doing here? I'm getting these areas here. There may even be some petals. You know, sometimes what I like to do is perhaps, you know, look, there's a petal at the back here. We could actually do that whole petal, you know, this darker shade of orange. So always with, with shadows looking at getting the petals at the back and behind things and at the base of things to be the darker ones. So we could go in like that. I've got two water jars on the go here as well. And again, I'll go down here. I've got more of a softer shadow on this petal here. It's much more of a blended area at the base of the petal rather than stripes, but we're going to use the same technique. So when you wet your petal like this, it needs to be a fair amount of water, but you shouldn't have any puddles. If you have puddles, then you lose all control of the paint. And again, I'm going in with thick paint here and just taking that shadow up as far as I need it. Now we are going to use other shadow colours here, so I won't be using this orange on every single petal, but there is quite a lot of it, so I'll be thinking about that as well. If you get any area where it starts to suddenly bleed out in sort of almost like a burst of colour and you don't want that to happen, all you have to do is dry your brush a little bit. And just off camera here, I have, uh, I have this piece of... Uh, of paper towel and I can dab onto there. So I'm going to go in now and I'm going to work this orange shadow colour in first. Each time I pre-wet the petal before I add quite thick, quite sticky paint. It's really important with a flower like this that you don't overdo the shadow and that you do leave areas of pure yellow. And we want this shadow to contrast with these pure bright areas of yellow petal. Next, we're going to add what I would call a proper shadow color, a neutral, a gray. It's really important that you mix the right color here or that you have the right color here. It's very easy to overdo shadows on petals, particularly to go too brown. If you do that, you can instantly kill your flower. So let's look now at this petal shadow color and how we can add more shadow and definition to our petals without killing them. So I've got my orange on the flower petals. It's looking really uh, nice and fresh and you can see that they've got some molded shape. The color I'm going to go in next with is my petal shadow color. So if you don't have this one, what you want to do is get something like um, a cerulean or a little bit of phthalo and put tiny touches of yellow and pink in until you make that kind of neutral grayish lilac. I've got mine ready made here and this is from my um, from my floral set and uh, I've got to be careful with this although it's a good color I still like I said you've always got to be careful with flowers you mustn't kill them now you never want to go in with brown shadow um, particularly not on white or yellow flowers it's quite disastrous it will just instantly kill your flower dead so you want to go in when you're putting shadows on petals sometimes they're greenish that can go for any color petal Sometimes they're greenish, sometimes they're greyish. If they're greyish, you want to head to the lilac, blue, green end of the spectrum. You never want to go into those sort of muddy greys. I'm going to do the exact same thing here in that I'm going to pre-wet the petal. Important at this stage as well that you've changed your water so you're not going in with water that isn't clean. This petal here had a little hole in which I actually placed in, but I've still got quite a lot of pencil there. and. Um, in the real photograph, you can see that they're quite dark, those petals up the top. So I've got some leeway to adjust that. So I'm gonna go in now with this shadow color across the top of the flower like this. Always pre-wetting the petals and always making sure that the petal next to has dried. Again, we can get some of those lines on if we want by going in with barely wet paint and in that way it will stick. You can see how dark it makes this petal, which is fine, but you really must keep these, um, these shadows, these accents in very small areas. We're also gonna go in with some green later on, so I'm gonna leave some petals ready for that. It seems to be the ones on the left that are more greenish. Again, I'm gonna go down here, always using clean water and always being careful that I don't just allow these shadow colors to pollute the whole painting. 
so that you end up with a flower that doesn't look fresh anymore. This is a sunset painting that I'm doing here, so there will be stronger shadows and darker colours, but we still don't want to kill our flowers and to knock out all of that lovely fresh yellow. So again, I'm going to leave plenty of spaces for petals so that we can do a little bit green as we go on to the next stage and always, always being careful not to cover up all of the yellow. Now, in addition to the orange and the shadow colour, we also have little touches of green within these petals. It's very, very common, especially with white and yellow flowers, to get some of the green of the plant showing up in the petals. So we're going to add a little bit of this now. Again, we must be careful not to overdo it so that we keep our petals looking fresh and overall still being bright yellow. So let's get some touches of green on these petals as well. So again, I'm pre-wetting. And you can see that I've put shadow around the edges of these bottom petals here. And what this is going to do is make it look as if they're tipping away from us slightly. So I'm going to use this colour here. This is a colour that I helped design. This is called Darkest Green. And this is in my floral set. Now, if you don't have a colour like this, you can easily mix your own. Something like a, uh, a Prussian blue and a sort of a light to medium yellow. Something like a cadmium yellow will do the trick. There are other blues that you could use as well. Or if you've got a ready mixed green, if you've got something like a viridian, um, you could use that. Often viridian is mislabeled. In the, uh, in the cheaper brands, sometimes they take their phthalo green and they call it viridian. So if you have a color that's really, really bright, or sometimes it can even just be named something like emerald, if your green is too bright, I advise you to just dull it down a little bit so that it looks a bit more natural. You could pop something like a little bit of pink or a little bit of Payne's Grey in it and that'll just give it that more natural look so it's not too bright because we don't want to take anything away from the brightness of the sunflower. I'm going to put a few more touches of green in as well. It really is a balancing act so that we don't kill the yellow. We do get some nice shadows on there. And we've got a variety of shadows as well. So we're going to keep it really, really subtle and place those little bits of green in. As I said, they mostly seem to be around this left-hand side. So the petals are looking much more three-dimensional, but what about the centres? What we're going to do now is go in with a second colour. We're going to go in with some green paint because there are some quite green areas within those large flower centres. And those are what we're going to add next. It won't be the final stage. We'll work darks on top later. Now at this stage the petals are dry and I want to paint the centres here and I want a warmer green than the one I've got out here. So I'm going to take some of this yellow here that we used initially for the petals and I'm going to pop some green in it. So we're going to make a warmer sort of more lime coloured green and I'm going to keep adding paint to that until I get the right consistency. I want it to be quite a strong colour. So I'm going to mix up plenty and go nice and strong and dark and lime coloured with this green. So you can see we've got the orange colour here, we've got some darker dots in there and we've got more green towards the centre and a little bit towards the outsides as well. So I'm going to start in the middle putting the green on and then I'm going to fade to clean water and then go back to the green as we get to the edge. So popping some green in the middle here like this, just getting it in roughly the centre there it's going to be quite loose this because we're going to go in later on with some watercolour pencils and really define this area. And I'm going to get a damp brush now and start just spreading that edge out a little bit. I'm controlling the water levels by dabbing my brush onto the paper and then taking the water out further. We're going to try and keep the whole thing wet so that we don't end up with drying lines. I'm going to go in now so the edges here are still dry. I'm going to use my brush to really go around that edge. And then we'll start bringing it into where it meets the clean water. What we want to do is maintain some of that orange. So we have almost a ring of green around the outside like this. And then that area of darker green in the middle. So working fairly quickly here. Going around any little petal shapes that I need to. So that we end up with green in the centre and green around the edges and areas in the middle of the orange colour. If you get one or two bleed lines and 
backgrounds here. It doesn't actually matter because we're going to be going on top of it to make all those little dots in watercolour pencil. So we really will be able to sort of almost clean that area up if we need to with the pencils. We want to make sure is that there aren't any really sort of strong hard edges there like so. For this next stage I'm going to do something that I often do and that is to pick up a watercolour pencil. We're going to use it to add those dark speckles where the seeds are. Please don't worry if you don't have any watercolour pencils. You can simply use some dark brown paint and a small paintbrush to add those details and those speckles to the middle part of your flower. So what we want to do now is work in and get some of these tiny speckles. So I've found this pencil here. This is an Inktense watercolour pencil. Now last time I used these on the channel I got all sorts of people moaning at me that I didn't explain the difference between an ink tense, this is by Derwent, and an ordinary watercolour pencil and really um, the way I use them it doesn't seem to matter much because basically these are ink and you can't re-wet them but I almost never re-wet watercolour pencil anyway so um, it really didn't matter to me but you know if you're worried about it that's the thing. They are a little bit stronger than standard watercolour pencils. You want really to use a very dark brown here, possibly even and one of those really dark greens would work as well but I'm going to mostly use I think this uh, this dark brown here and I'm going to work onto a wet surface now I've just sharpened this pencil and the smallest dots are in the middle so I'm going to start in the middle and work out so I'm going to re-wet really the whole area quite quickly I want to be careful at this stage some of the underneath paint will disturb so you want to keep cleaning your brush so that you're not sort of spreading that green out into areas of orange where you don't perhaps want it. Just getting that whole area wet there. It won't matter if you, you know, you miss the last little millimetre around the edge or something like that. We can always put a bit more water on as we go, but I'm just getting a wet surface there to work on. What that will do is it will enable the watercolour pencil, the ink tense watercolour pencil, to release a lot more pigment. And then I'm just using the um, the shape of the flower and of course you've got this kind of squashed oval thing going on here, this ellipse in the centre there, which is how we drew it originally so that we start to get a more natural looking effect and then as I go out I'm going to make sort of larger marks so this color is almost black but not quite black and I really want to get some strong contrasts going on now and some of the contrast will come at the end as the colors go in around the flower it's quite light up here but um, over towards this other side there are some dark leaves going in later on and there we start getting some of these little Mark. So here I'm just looking back all the time at the picture and there's a lot of these kind of almost semi-circular sort of curved marks going on and I will use the brush just slightly in a minute in order to uh, darken around the edges a little bit there and we can get more of a sort of an, and we can get more of a sort of an outline effect here by just spreading a little bit those edge ones. Don't want to overdo this and get too much of a hard line there and as I mentioned at the beginning, once the ink tense is dry, it can't be re-wet. And you know, that's not necessarily a disadvantage. That can also be an advantage. You want to go on top with a layer and you don't want the underneath layer to disturb. As they say in the UK, six of one and half a dozen of the other. Drying out a little bit here, so just adding a bit more water. Trying to maintain that light orange area because we want strong contrasts here and we're looking at going darker as we go out towards the petals. For now, I'm just going to keep working on adding these central speckles. And one last thing I'm doing at this stage is just taking a damp brush and joining some of those dark bits together around the edge just so that we get a nice fairly dark outline in an area that would naturally be more shadowed because it curves away from us and also it'll help to show off our nice light petals. Although the greens and the leaves are not part of this tutorial, we are going to put a tiny touch of dark green just close to the flower centres where some of those petals overlap. You can just see a little bit of a gap through. There are gaps between the petals, but we're also going to do some of them a really dark green. It's going to help to add drama to our flower. And then finally, we're going to have a look at the petals and see if they're bright enough. And if I feel that they need ramping up in colour, I'm going to use a technique called glazing. 
which simply means to take a transparent layer of color over the top of previous layers. It has the effect of making them much, much stronger in color and more solid. You can use it for all sorts of things, including adjusting an underneath layer from warm to cool or vice versa. So I'm gonna point the camera downwards now. So let's get on and add those final touches of strength and drama to our sunflower painting. So our sunflower's looking pretty good, but the center's kind of overwhelming the outer petals at the moment. So there's a couple of things I'm going to do and just strengthen the contrast between them. And so one of the things I want to do is there's, um, there's quite a lot of dark green around the outside of the sunflower. You can see these spiky green bits here, although they're not really part of this tutorial. I am going to go in between some of the petals because they would naturally have that dark green behind. So I'm using that same very dark green color, but I'm, I've got it much thicker on the brush now. I picked up a lot more pigment and not too much water and I'm just being really careful. So going in now and what this will do is that will sort of delineate between the petals and slightly sharpen them up. So I'm going to go around and I think in the original photograph they've probably put a few more petals around this side than I have, but that's okay. And we're going to take in some of this dark green in places between like this and even where the petals are crowded together like this there are tiny areas where you just see this sort of little bit of dark green peeking through. So you can see that that will start to give more shape to the petals. The other thing to do at this stage is to have a look at the petals themselves and decide if the colour is strong enough. So I think some of these could be a little bit stronger. So what I'm going to do is something called glazing. So very important that I've got clean water that hasn't got any green in it. And then I'm going to get some of the original yellow colour that we use. That's the diarylide yellow. And in places, all I'm going to do is put another coat over the top. So let me show you. Let's do this one here. Let me show you how that looks. It doesn't change what's underneath. You've still got that shadow. You've still got the green at the edge and orange towards the middle. You've just put another layer of yellow very carefully without pressing too hard or agitating across the top. And all that's going to do is it's going to strengthen the color. So the color is still there. All the shading that we did before is still there. But we're just getting it a little bit stronger and a little bit brighter. This also tends to make things more solid. Now we don't want um, flower petals to be completely solid, but it does give them a sense of being more there and less transparent. So I'm going to do that as well. And with those final touches, the dark green and going a little bit stronger with the yellow in places, that will be our flower finished. Now, if you enjoyed the part of this video where we used watercolor pencil, you may be interested to know that I'm actually at the moment building a watercolor pencils course for beginners. And there's going to be eight flower tutorials in there. So that's eight full flower tutorials in watercolor pencils. And I also have one free one coming up here on YouTube in a week or two. So when I launch a new course, there's always a big discount that you can gain from pre-ordering. So in other words, I open the doors to the course somewhere between four and two weeks before the course launches. And at that stage, you can buy it quite a bit more cheaply than it will be at full price. On the day when the course actually launches and goes up, it'll go back up to its standard price. But if you get in early, you can get that big discount. The discount will be available via my mailing list. So do make sure that you're on my weekly newsletter list. The easiest way to get on that list is to pop into the description of this video. I've got some free downloadable PDFs that you can grab and those will place you on my mailing list. I will not email you every day and you can unsubscribe at any time that you would like. So once a week or so, you just get sent some free content. You'll get reminders about YouTube videos you might want to watch. And you'll also get special offers on paid products I have for you. So do remember to pop into that video description and grab those PDFs. In the meantime, if you're interested in learning more ways of using watercolor pencils alongside your watercolors, I've got a video that will show you lots of ways I use watercolor pencils alongside my watercolors in my own paintings. You can watch that video right now.